In studio with the Admiral Bill Stumblefield, who uh, purchased lunch yesterday for me, and I am so grateful, Admiral. It is my pleasure. Your generosity is beyond belief. How come that, when I go out with him, I have to pay my own tab? What's that about? Well, it was is my is is a pre birthday. I'm, I'm that, giving that you I, a hard time. that I had to buy breakfast uh, uh, lunch for folks to be sure they would come and celebrate my pre birthday. Okay, okay. <laughs> Today's Bill's birthday. Did you know that? I yeah. did not. It didn't come up about, on my. How about singing Happy Birthday? No, day? I can't sing. Bill's birthday, Ooh. Danny Stagger's birthday, yeah. Doug Copenhaver's Doug birthday. Copenhaver, Happy yeah. birthday, yeah. Admiral. Yeah. I'm yeah. pleased to be spending the morning with you. <laughs> he didn't bring any cake in, if that's I did not. Ask. But no cake? no cake? Are you yeah. kidding? What's the, Bonnie doing? Well, Danny Stagger's provided the cake, and it was it's marvelous cake. Really. Did he take it with him? There's not much left. <laughs> <laughs> Our guest via telephone is Attorney General Patrick Morrissey, who yesterday in front of a packed house in Harpers Ferry, declared himself a candidate for governor. The mystery and the long wait over. Now, we know what the future plans are of the Attorney General of the state of West Virginia. Patrick, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's good to be with you. And we had a heck of a day yesterday, starting out in Harpers Ferry and going through Mineral County, uh, Preston County, finishing up in Harrison County. Now I'm up in Wheeling and we're getting a couple really busy days in, but it was terrific to start home in the Eastern Panhandle. You ran for Senate last major election cycle, nearly defeating the incumbent, Senator Joe Manchin, and this time the declaration is for governor. You had the ultimate decision to make of which office it would be, governor or senator. Why did you select governor? You know, I I spent a lot of time really thinking about the best way that I can serve the people of the state. And for many who came yesterday, first of all, I want to thank folks. We had a heck of a big crowd. And the folks who were there yesterday probably know me as well as any in the state because, you know, I've lived in the eastern panhandle for a long time. People know me. And people have so been so receptive uh, to the things that we've tried to accomplish. I know when I started to think about what our state needs going forward, you know, I looked at a number of different issues. And one of the things that I concluded is that West Virginia needs a conservative leader with a deep record of fighting and winning against the political elites, defending our values, and accomplishing really big things. And I think the one thing that many people across the state are going to see, that there's a real difference between my candidacy and that of everyone else, because we get huge things done whether we're talking about taking on the opioid epidemic and the litigation where we're now close to $1 billion in settlement resources, developing a landmark agreement for how that money gets spent. There's probably going to be 650 to 700 million spent uh, on opioids and it's got to get spent the right way, especially with the fentanyl epidemic uh, coming in Washington to our shores so significantly. We've protected jobs in a way that no one else has. And really have stood up to people who try to push West Virginia and my office around. And so I think people are going to see that I'm a strong conservative, but also we accomplish things. And West Virginia really needs that badly to take on some of the new challenges in front of us. We have to grow our workforce participation rate. That's critical. Attract more population uh, to our state and then continue to work and build on some of the successes we've seen in recent years with the lower tax cuts and the new business starts and educational choice, but we need to go further. And that's why I'm running. There are a lot of prominent names in the field as candidates for the House, for Senate, and for governor. Did any of those names in those fields already declared affect your selection of which office to run for, Patrick? Now, look, I took a look at every uh, opportunity of how I could serve best uh, for West Virginia. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm motivated by what we have to do to help West Virginia reach her potential. I, I've, that's always been my position. I think uh, Rob and Maria and folks on the phone, you, you know, I go to work and I'm known as the guy that grinds every day, that works to try to get things done. I don't worry about uh, my opponents. You know, I'm not going to talk about them today. In fact, I think some of them are going to probably come up with some good ideas, and I'm hopeful we're going to be able to incorporate them all going forward. 
But the biggest difference, once again, is they're going to be professing their aspirations and their hopes, whereas we've been able to get really big things done and accomplished. And I think that's the difference. So, And I think across the board, we have one of the strongest records in the country of anyone considering running for higher office. Bill Stubblefield, the Admiral. Happy birthday, by the way. Uh, good morning, Patrick. Uh, in your campaign, are you going to weave in your U.S. Open referee story? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, you know, I, I've always said, uh, for those listening who don't know, I was a professional tennis umpire, and I was always fond of saying that it was good preparation uh, for getting into the political arena because people get very mad at you. You could get screamed out of stadiums if they don't like the call. Uh, so I think it was good preparation here. And no doubt all of the skills and all of the background uh, will be brought to bear. And, you know, Bill, I, I know you mentioned that, and that's a fun part of my background. I, I loved it. I played tennis growing up, and I was able to uh, travel to different parts of the country umpiring tennis. But one of the stories I really emphasized uh, yesterday is that, you know, I wasn't given a silver spoon early in my life. You know, we haven't talked about this much, but I had to work really hard uh, for what I ultimately obtained. And I was just very fortunate that my dad and my mom taught me about a work ethic. And uh, thank that I thank them every day for uh, doing that. On a more serious note, uh, Patrick, uh, uh, the Governor Justice left as a legacy, I think, a ro the road program. Uh, have you thought about, if you're elected, what legacy you'll try to leave besides just good, uh, good leadership? You know, I think the first thing that I would ask people to focus on is look at our record in the Attorney General's office. And it's a really strong record. If you look at the major issues and the challenges affecting West Virginia, you're going to see a guy that delivered. So over the last number of years, there have been a lot of efforts to hurt our state's energy jobs, whether we're talking the Waters United States rule or the originally the President Obama power plan. Then that moved over to President Biden with his Green New Deal. We stood up every single time and built massive coalitions to oppose those efforts, which really would have targeted and eliminated so many West Virginia jobs, and we won. If you look at the opioid epidemic, you know, you guys know that a lot of people unfairly criticized me over the years uh, because they were uh, trying to put themselves in, in my shoes. And yet now I think if you look and you see all 55 counties have endorsed our plan for attacking the opioid epidemic, 94 House members, everyone in the West Virginia Senate. And I think because people know that we put our mind to developing a plan, we built consensus to gain that plan, and then separately, uh, we went into court, we won, and we protected our state. I think the legacy is going to be that uh, we uh, make promises, but we deliver on big things for the state. Uh, I'm conservative, and I'm hopeful to be a key part of West Virginia's renaissance. We can be that shining state in the mountains and i'm going to keep working and just keep building on that record when i serve as the state's next governor okay uh so a lot of what you've uh, uh you've mentioned is uh fighting the the elites the uh the progressive elites uh that battle has been going on for a while uh do you think that we as a state are winning or losing on that front look i think that the threats are constant and I know that in my office every day because I have to stand and defend West Virginia in my current job. So it seems like every day the ACLU and others are filing lawsuits uh, to stop progress in our state. And there are people in Washington, D.C. trying to target West Virginia and limit its ability to engage in freedom and to live under the Constitution. I think that West Virginia is making progress but part of the reason I ran for governor is I think we have to level up even more. And we have to really go after some of the intractable problems that uh, need to be addressed. We know that we're bleeding in population. Now, in the eastern panhandle, and folks listening may know, I moved to West Virginia in 2006 very proudly because I used to do a lot of hiking on the Appalachian Trail or kayaking on the Shenandoah River. And I loved it. And that motivated me. And what I'm going to try to do is find out what's going to motivate 
everyone else to move to our great state. And certainly that leads to great opportunities in the eastern panhandle, which has seen a huge a surge in population. And just since I've been there 17, 18 years, we know that the panhandle has grown a lot. There are other parts of the state that are in a position to really grow. And when that happens, or even if we just fill 25 or 30,000 of the 65,000 jobs that are currently available, I mean, they're sitting waiting for people to, to jump in on them. Think about what that does to the economy, to growth, to families in our state. And I think that's going to be used to help lift the entire state up. So, uh, good morning, Patrick. Um, uh, tr- truth be told, um, I tried to get you to uh, to spill the beans last week when we chatted, but uh, no go. And um, and you did a great job yesterday um, with with all of your supporters. Um, just a little side story or a little side note: um, Would the attorney general's office? This is your current job. Um, the attorney general's office be involved in representing the state police in the the situation that's going on now with the West Virginia State Police. Yeah. So our office serves as the lawyer for uh, virtually all state agencies, and so that's part of the role of the attorney general. Uh, but the state attorney general also. Uh, represents the people generally and can speak and act uh, independently. So uh, the the fact is that the office always gets called on to represent entities, and we've represented state police and corrections and many different entities along the way. Obviously, I have some limitations when various issues come up because an attorney has to keep confidences for his client. But uh, I will tell you this, uh, as governor, we're going to take on a lot of the issues that really haven't been getting full attention that they deserve. And in particular, I'm focusing on some of the workforce issues, a lot of the shortages, and uh, ensuring that all of these agencies across the board, I'm not singling anyone out, that they get the kind of management and attention that they need. And that's part of the thing that I bring to bear as the attorney general. Many people may remember when I first came in, I cleaned house. And I did it based upon the principles. We had really good people staffing these positions. I know I'm looking to examine everything about state government and really make sure that it's working well because we have a model uh, to rely on from being AG. Attorney General Patrick Morrissey is our guest here on the program. Let's project forward, Patrick, and get through a general election in which you win and become governor. How would a Patrick Morrissey governorship for four or eight years be similar or different from uh, the Jim Justice governorship we've seen? Well, look, I think there have been a number of positive things done. So uh, I know people have asked me, are we going in the right direction, the wrong direction? I think that there are a couple areas where we're doing well and we're building. You know, some of the job starts, the announcement, I think that's incredible for our state. We all crave new job opportunities in West Virginia. That hasn't happened in a long time. That's beginning to open up right now. I think we have to keep building on that. So that's positive. We saw educational choice. School choice, I think, is an incredible opportunity to attract people to West Virginia. And I think it's going to drive educational attainment levels and standards up in terms of how our kids get educated and the opportunities that they have. The opioid work that we're doing, not only in terms of the record-breaking settlements, but the structure, the agreement of how the resources are going to be used, that's an opportunity to help repair our state. I think about all of those issues as positive steps going forward, and we need to build on those. But we also know that we need to grow our population. It's been shrinking, and I think in large part to due to a lot of the policies and the challenges that we had over a multi-decade period. And we have to grow our workforce. That's a critical challenge. We can build and do better on that front by putting a lot of energy in. And I'm going to be rolling out a number of plans over the course of the next uh, six months to a year, which I think will demonstrate, hey, we're doing this right because we're going to have concrete plans. And you guys know the work I do as AG. I generally announce, here are our principles, here's our position, and then we go to work at it. And we're going to always 
communicate directly to people and inform them of what's going on. So, you know, I'm not here to, to look backwards. I think good things have been done. I'm going to build on the good things, but I'm going to take on the new challenges uh, very aggressively. Will you seek additional tax cuts? I will. I will. And we're going to work out exactly what that looks like. And one of the things I'd like to do is listen to a lot of people across the state. I know that West Virginia uh, has a lot of different regions that each have unique needs. You know, I happen to be from the Eastern Panhandle, so I, I know a lot of the issues that arise day to day. And I, I just talk to people about what some of their concerns are. But one of the things that I am focused on is that when you look at how hard inflation has hit West Virginia, it's ravaged our state. And it's hurting a lot of people who are struggling going paycheck to paycheck. We need to help people have more take-home money, and I think that's got to be a focus. So I'm looking at that, and we're going to be getting a lot of ideas. I think uh, some of the tax uh, cuts that have gone through I, I like and I support, and there's some new budget information out talking about uh, even additional resources uh, that are coming into the state. I think we have to look at that closely and return as much money back to the people so that we can become even more attractive as a state to move into. And I'm, I'm very interested in doing that. As the governor of West Virginia, will you carry the torch for state employees, including teachers in the eastern panhandle, for finally achieving the goal of locality pay? Look, I'm interested in helping teachers get paid uh, what they deserve. And certainly, I think that uh, teachers have been historically underpaid in West Virginia. I have said that repeatedly, and I think that we need to do everything imaginable to lure best and brightest teachers into West Virginia. And so I'm committed to that, to make sure that we can get to a place where um, teachers know that West Virginia is an incredibly welcoming state. One of the things uh, that we have to look at is overall, how do we address some of the workforce needs in West Virginia. And part of that includes state government, because we know, look, I, I run an office in state government, and one of our biggest challenges is HR, uh, because there are a lot of people, especially uh, after COVID, that didn't want to come and didn't want to work, and we had a lot of op openings. That's why you hear that there are 65,000 job openings in the state. But I think that we need to focus on that as some of our state workforce uh, gets older and some may need near retirement, uh, we need strategies to lure people in and convince many of our kids and families to stay right here in West Virginia and look at the many job opportunities out there. So I'm certainly going to uh, look at that and be willing to make changes to make sure that when state government functions, and I think it should be smaller than what it is, but when it functions, it needs to run like a a Swiss clock. So, Patrick, very quickly, if you uh, if you win, you're not going to commute from the Eastern Panhandle. You're going to live in the governor's mansion, correct? I, yeah, I'm going okay. to live in Charleston. And, and I think many people know I, I try to get back to the Eastern Panhandle a lot. And once again, sure. uh, you folks are up there every day. You know, you hear reports of me uh, coming back home uh, all the time. And so I will still be back an awful lot because it is home. Uh, but you know, the constitutional does require that uh, the constitutional officers uh, reside at the seat of government. And I've taken that seriously uh, over the years. And that's why we spend a lot of time in Charleston. Uh, but we also try to get around the state as a whole to listen to people because the needs of the Eastern Panhandle are different than the needs of the Northern Panhandle or uh, Charleston or the Southern Coal Fields or uh, the Mid Ohio Valley. And so I, I'm always going to be getting out and around, but also I'm going to come back home because I love the Eastern Panel. I love every single county in our state, uh, but the folks in the EP have treated me so well, and there's so much rich history and amazing, amazing culture in the EP. Uh, one of the things that I've told people with our announcements, we did it over at the Clarion Inn in Harper's Ferry, is that you know I look forward to the day when we can do some of these events at some of these iconic places that we have around the state, uh, whether it's uh, down at the train station in Harper's Ferry or, you know, I've always thought being down at the point of uh, the confluence of the Potomac and the Shenandoah or, you know, coming up and spending time 
uh, in all parts of the EP or across the state. Uh, I know that I'm looking forward to showcasing what's quite amazing about our state. Patrick, building upon that, the iconic places, I know it does not arise to the level of the workforce, infrastructure, or HR needs, but we, we in West Virginia and every county has these wonderful old buildings that are approaching 100 years of age. Uh, they, they require a lot of uh, love and care. They are a wonderful tourist attraction, but yet we do not have the resources to maintain them or in some cases renovate them. Uh, do you see any, any way that there could be some support to these? And every county has these, these wonderful old structures that mean so much look, from I, historical. I want to take a look at the list of all of our assets. I think one of the things that you do when you run for an office is that you look at all the assets of a state And then you look at all the challenges, right? So you start by developing categories. How are you going to solve problems? And then you have the principles about why you're running. You know, I think that West Virginia has so much to offer. And I think there can be some incredible private sector opportunities as well. I think you need to look no further than the Hilltop House in uh, Harper's Ferry to see eventually we're going to have an incredible, vibrant hotel I'd like to think I'm a big part of the reason for that, because now we've been winning in court over and over again uh, as some of the challenges have been brought to try to stop that hotel from being built. But I think that there are opportunities to look, whether it's private sector or you know, to build up on public-private partnerships. One of the things that I think the, the Justice Administration has done well, it's been uh, taking seriously uh, its rehab and repair of a lot of our state parks. And there have been a number of investments that have been made. And uh, that excites me a lot because I know that before I moved to West Virginia, I used to come visit some of our amazing state parks. Uh, you know, I spent time in Berkeley Springs. I spent time uh, all across West Virginia. And I know that that was the reason why I came to West Virginia, because it's an amazing place. If you come and visit in our state, you're more likely to stay for a long time or ultimately live here. We need that mindset. We need to make sure we're looking out for the people who have lived here in West Virginia and make sure that they have opportunities and their families can stay. But we also have to attract a lot more people. And tourism and public-private partnerships, I think, should be part of that. Attorney General Patrick Morrissey has been our guest here on the program. Any final questions for Patrick, by the way? I'm good. All right, my last question for you, Patrick, is do you have a dog? <laughs> uh, yes. Well, I will tell you this. You haven't seen me uh, take the dog around the campaign trail uh, yet, but uh, I'm fortunate. So we're a family that loves dogs. And so uh, we, between uh, my daughter, Julia, uh, and my wife, you know, I think, uh, and Julia's husband, I think combined there are about uh, four dogs uh, that are roaming around and mixing up at where they stay. So we love the dogs, and, you know, I haven't quite uh, decided or adopted on a particular uh, campaign animal yet, but I will tell you, uh, you know, I, I love animals, and I think uh, most people in West Virginia do. Apparently the dog plays well statewide. It so. does indeed. Both ends. Yeah. <laughs> People are going to need a new dog of prominence, Patrick. You That's right. Got to fill in there. Hey, well, uh, you know, I, I thought on I thought on day one we'd uh, start in the panhandle and talk about uh, why I'm the most qualified conservative to be governor, why we're the only one who's gotten big things done. But you know, maybe that doesn't cut it against the dog. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, the the dog may have cost Mitt Romney an election, and it may have saved the justice governorship. Amen. So, yeah. There you, there yeah, you go, yeah. Patrick. Thanks so much for your time this morning. We appreciate it as always, and best of luck to you in the upcoming primaries. 